One benchmark we worked on last year is the beer benchmark, benchmarking IR. Um, before that, a lot of people have been using these embedding approaches to do in-domain information retrieval. So take a model, have training data for it, train the embedding model, and then use it for search. But I found it a lot more interesting to do out of domain information retrieval where you take a pre-trained model and you apply it to some other domain, some other search setting. And in here, we collected a lot of different tasks and data sets. So for example, in tweet retrieval, we have some news article and we want to find tweets talking about this. In um, Aguan and Touche, we have some arguments and we want to find, for example, counter arguments to it. Uh, Fever, we have some claim and we want to find Wikipedia articles supporting or refuting the claim. So we collected a lot of data sets in a lot of different information retrieval settings. And then we were comparing different neural search methods against like a baseline. The baseline is lexical search was BM25. And what we saw, for example, the dense passage retrieval model from, from Facebook, it only performed well on the one data set on Wikipedia at where, where it was trained, but on all other 17 data sets, it was like weaker than lexical search. And also at that time, the best dense embedding approach, task B only was better on eight out of 18 data sets than lexical search. So this gave like really interesting insights first that a lot of these dense embedding approaches have issues for unknown domains. Um, and then a lot of research have been done following up on this. Um, also that some sparse embedding models like Splate are work much better for unknown domains. Also the best approach beyond 25 was cross encoder and doc T5 query, extreme stable and robust across domains. And this gives like new insights, which really leads to like an improvement um, of the models. So, yeah, so, so, so what, yeah, that's, Pretty much what, what I summarized in the previous slide. So in domain, that's what people did before. We saw dense model work extremely good. So plus 18 points performance, but then out of domain, these dense models work not that well. But recent dense models, they became really strong. Um, so, so far the latest numbers I saw is that lexical search is only better on two out of 14 data sets. So the authors sadly not evaluated on all data sets. But also here we have to ask again, how good is the predictive power of beer? Do people still already overfit on the beer benchmark? And is it time to, to move to like beer version two and find like more and better and more challenging retrieval data sets? Well, on that slide before we move to... Uh... Sure. So just to clarify a couple of, um, uh, of the ideas here. So one, when we say dense model. So that is, you know, when you create um, a vector for each document that you're searching, and then you have a, uh, whenever you get a query that you turn that into a vector and then you do an, a nearest neighbor. Is that the general sort of definition of dense model that you're okay. using here? C correct, where we project every document and every query to a vector space. And then we look in the vector space, what's the, the closest document. And we hope that this closest document provides a good answer to the query. Okay. And then like one of my takeaways, I don't know if that was obvious to people before is that this, it was probably, um, I guess to frame it in a question, why was it, uh, why was, Beer uh, built so it uses data sets from different domains. Like, was it clear uh, or was it a suspicion that it's challenging for dense retrieval to do this domain adaptation stuff? Let like you train a model on, I don't know, legal and then it yeah. can't search Wikipedia? Yeah. Um, so, so that was not the intuition before. So uh, it was more putting numbers to a feeling. So before people working in domain, this in domain setting. So this is the MS Marco data set and say, okay, we train on it, we evaluate on it and show, okay, we have like extremely high boost in search quality. So 18 points, that's massive. So that's what 
what you extremely notice. And then people have been extremely vocal about this and say, semantic search with dense embeddings is so great, it works so well. But then you apply it on your data. So you apply it in the legal domain or in biomedical domain or in the fashion domain. And you have the feeling, okay, it doesn't look so good. So, so bio ask is like question answer retrieval in biomedical domain. As we see, the dense embedding model is much weaker than the lexical search model. So, and this is like just a feeling. So, so you read all the papers say, hey, that's, that's amazing. That's a new thing. But why does it not work for your case? And here we, we put numbers to this feeling and really showed, okay, um, it's not only you, it's not only your feeling, but Yes, the, the models, they have challenges in, in out of domain settings. And this insight, putting numbers to it, spin up a lot or inspire a lot of new research. People investigating, okay, why are dense embedding models so strong in domain and so weak out of domain? So one thing people found is like, in domain, you have like a really high trained test overlap. So most test queries have been seen in training time. And then obviously these learned models work extremely well if they have seen uh, this. Also people showed like out of domain words, like unseen words, what's the impact that dense model extremely struggle with unseen words. And this gave like a really lot of new insights how to better train these models. Like see, okay, how can we create better benchmarks so, so that the test and train set is really separate? How can we deal with like unknown words and so on? Okay. And to, to people who are new to this kind of, of uh, these kinds of data sets, the um, documents, are they short enough to fit within, let's say the token limitation or are they broken down into uh, smaller yeah. chunks? How is that sort of dealt? With? Um, yes, sadly that that's kind of the limitation of this benchmark. So this is mainly passage retrieval. So so, so the query and the documents, they mainly fit into the context lengths um, of a transformer network. So, so like 512 word pieces, there's some data sets like robust of four, which have like on average, like 700 words in a news article, but there's no crazy data set involved where you need to find, I don't know, PDF documents with hundreds of pages. And so that's like a still a blind spot where a new better benchmark could be created. Okay. And when we say encoders, is the general case here that you have one model or is it a model for queries and a model for, for documents or is it different across different models? Um, it's different across different models. Like DPR has like two different um, models like one for query one for for document task b has the same for query and document and then people also studied this like like new benchmarks also give possibility to study new effects showing that the same model works better especially for out of domain words so if there's like an out of domain word that the a word the the model has not seen during training if you have like two different models, they projected may projected to like different points in the vector space. So it will not be found. But if you use the same architecture for this, it still projects us to the same or roughly the same point in the, the vector space. So that's why same model encoding model for query and document work totally better, especially like for the out of domain setting. Okay. 